Welcome, Kaylee. So happy to have you here today. And we're interviewing Kaylee. She is the Turning Point Connecticut Project Coordinator. Welcome. So excited to get to know you today. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. Excellent. So I'm going to start off by asking you the main question. How did Turning Point Connecticut evolve? So Turning Point CT was developed in 2013. Um, it was essentially created as a place um, by young people in Connecticut for young people in Connecticut. So the main idea back then was to have a open forum where people could connect with other people who have, you know, been through mental health issues. And, you know, as social media kind of came about, the forum became less popular because nobody needs to go onto a website anymore when everyone has social media apps on their phones. So mm -hmm. um, we discontinued the forum last year. Um, oh, and we okay. now kind of focus on writing blog posts um, where a lot of our staff, um, we're a team of four people. So our staff write posts where they kind of share their experience, you know, mm -hmm. to give that peer support that people really need because peer support does like such a different thing than going to like a provider or clinician, like therapy is really important, but so is being connected to your peers who have also been through it. Cause mm -hmm. it's nice to like have that connection with someone else who has gone through what you've gone through. So that's really like our main thing is like, you know, that peer to peer connection and um, like we have a lot of different things on the website, like we have a podcast um, where, you know, we bring in guests and we kind of talk about various mental health issues and like depending on, you know, what awareness month it is or like mm -hmm. if there are certain days, we kind of try to highlight those. Um, we also have like a video section where we kind of just share, you know, quotes and like kind of inspirational things mm -hmm. and like advice. Um, and we also have like our story section, which is one of probably my favorite things on the website where anyone can come on to the website and like share their story with others, you know, to try and, cause I've been sharing my story for years and like before mm -hmm. I even knew about Turning Point CT. So like having like a statewide website where like everyone in Connecticut can kind of like share their story, I think is really important because sharing our story not only helps other people, but it like kind of helps to end the stigma that surrounds mental health. So um, anyone is welcome to really submit content to any part of our website. And I think that's really important, especially now that we don't have the forum. And I think some people might feel safer on a website versus like, you know, sharing it on social media because social media feels so like in the public eye and like, you know, people are like, oh, nobody is going to look on this website, but we do have actually a lot of visitors who like come to our website and view mm -hmm. our content. So yeah, that's probably my favorite section because I really love reading through everyone's stories and like just mm -hmm. seeing like, oh, okay, like they've been through this and we have such a wide variety of like content. Like we have people who have struggled with things like eating disorders, you know, um, abuse or like you know just regular like anxiety depression OCD like just you know all walks of life ha are like mm -hmm. on the website so like if you're that person that feels like nobody else has gone through this you're like bound to find someone on our website who has been through what you've been through so I think that's really important to like feel seen and like you know have that visibility of all these various issues mm -hmm. so Oh, I love that. That's wonderful. It's true. Having that you're not alone. You're not isolated. Uh, finding community through that storytelling and sharing experiences. I, that sounds like a favorite part. I think I would love. Did not realize you, you had a story section. That's amazing. And then you mentioned that people can submit. How, um, how would they submit their stories? Would Because I can put it um, in the comments uh, section to if there's a link or an email they send it to. So it's actually really simple. You can do it right from the website. Um, so okay. it's you go to the Our Stories webpage mm -hmm. or section of the website, and there's literally a button for share your story in it. I think probably the nicest thing about it is, you know, a lot of people, they're like, I don't know where to start. So um, that 
when you click share your story, it gives you a prompt of like a couple questions you could answer just so you can like kind of get an idea of like, oh, what do I want to write about? What do I want to share? Because a lot of people, they're like, what do you mean share my story? Like, I don't even know what to tell you. So um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's nice to have like some kind of direction to go to. Yeah. Um, but after that, then it gets, um, it doesn't immediately get posted. One of us will mm-hmm. review it before it goes up. And then um, we'll usually, you know, approve it. And then it ends up on the website. So it's re- actually really easy. You don't have to email anyone, you know, cause a lot of people are like, ah, email, like a lot of younger yeah, people. Yeah, connecting so. their <laughs> personal information. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh so. my gosh, that I love that aspect and that ease of just, and not to mention, like you said, the coaching questions kind of just to lead you to maybe the meat of your story or what you really maybe right. want to concentrate because your story can be so big or you want to, sh- you know, it helps you hone in on maybe what you want to specifically share and help you focus on that area. Absolutely. But- and you can be like completely anonymous. You don't have to like put your name out there, you know, like you can have that anonymity. Like you don't have to be like, oh, I'm so and so. If you like, mm-hmm. if it helps, because for some people, it just helps to like even write your story and like share yes. it with other people. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't need to ne- necessarily share like, oh, I'm so and so. Like, can we mm-hmm. respect like if you want to keep your privacy? That was my next question. That's amazing because you're right. It gives you that freedom to express yourself and sometimes if written or however, just letting it out there and letting it go. And and it's like the next step and it's, it's very um, calming and just feels good. And, and then when you read other stories and you see how different stories are impacting so many people, you feel part of that, that process of healing and that process of, of connecting and helping others and, um, and by sharing your story. And I think that's one piece I don't think I've seen in other places. So that's a, that is such a great point to have besides connection to be able to, to have others, you know, you can, you transferred from a forum to this, this website source and people still can engage with it and you could still share as a forum, but it's just the next level, which I, I really applaud you guys. That's amazing ideas to do. Thanks. And excuse me. So you talked a little bit of how people connect with Turning Point. They can they can view videos. They can go through the podcast. Um, Now, you said you're peer to peer. Is there any direct peer to peer support or is it more through the engagement on the site and the podcast and things like that or your other social media channels? So we do offer um, statewide peer support, one-on-one peer support with our peer support specialist, Allie. Um, And so that can be whether in-person or virtual is kind of up to the person seeking the support, but um, we have that available and it's completely free to, um, you know, teens and young adults throughout the entire state. So, and there's really no barriers, you know, you don't need insurance for it because it's kind of just like, if you need the peer support we're here to like provide that. Mm -hmm. So amazing. And how would somebody connect to, to peer to peer support? So they'd reach out, um, whether by calling our office or Mm -hmm. emailing Allie directly and all of that information I can get to you. It's on our website, but I can get you a flyer to like put with this. So, Oh, that's amazing. Perfect. Thank you. Alrighty. And then, so you mentioned already, you covered how individuals can connect to Turning Point, not only through the, through the different um, social media connections, but the different content, sharing their story. So you've answered that, which is amazing. And how, I know you're, you're not very big. You said you're small. How do you guys, cause you are your social media presence. I did some peeking and things and you guys have amazing social media channels and platforms that you're using. I, this is a personal question of mine. I think, how do you guys keep it all going when you're such a small crew? How many are you? You're like four Four, four people. We have myself, a project assistant, a Mm -hmm. social media assistant, and then our peer support specialist. So, yeah. Wow. So how do you guys, get that all going and and be able to keep all those platforms kind of moving along. 
So um, I per- I started as a social media manager for mm. Turning Point CT when I started with the project. And that's because I actually have a background in social media. Like I went to school for new media studies. So this is something that like I personally actually have um, experience in and like the knowledge to run the social media and channels in a way, you know, that's like um, pleasing and like, you know, that makes people want to engage on social media. Um, so that's part of why it's run so well, but also, you know, I, I know what I like to see. It helps that mm-hmm. we are young people, you know, so yes. like we regularly use social media. Mm-hmm. Um, so like a lot of organizations you'll see kind of like just like not a lot of activity on the account or like Mm -hmm. you'll only see like flyers for events coming up. But like, while those are important to share for sure, you know, you have to have that content that's engaging that shows Mm -hmm. like, you know, we are real people, Um, you know, we've been through it. And like, because a lot of people, like that's the thing about social media, it's kind of about like the personality of the account. Mm -hmm you know, people follow for the people who run it, uh, as well as, you know, the services they provide. So it's really important to like, share stuff where, you know, that our audience is looking for. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of our content, like we write um, blog posts every week. So sometimes it's just like promoting that or promoting old content on our website and just kind Mm -hmm. of sharing like little snippets of what's on our website that, you know, we feel is like important to share and, you know, that people can resonate with. So it's really just posting that like engaging content as well as, you know, stuff people can connect with. And, you Mm -hmm. know, right now reels and like those short videos are super popular. So They are, they really are. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been like really focusing on that and like kind of trying to do the trend research because a lot of it has to do with like reusing sounds so like I'll look for some like motivational quotes or like you know someone talking about mental health issues so I'm like oh I this is really like helpful to me I'm sure other people would find this really helpful so then I kind of just use that and like use footage of like myself or like the other Mm -hmm. staff members or even just going into Canva and like finding some kind of video clip that goes with it so I just think it's like so important for people to like for connection, you know, like, cause mm-hmm. that's why people are, like spend so much time on social media. Cause they're looking yes. for that connection, especially because of COVID, you know, there's mm. not that many in person things right now. Like cause no. we used to go to events. Oh, like that was like one of the main things we did, like we'd be at community events, but there's not that many community events going on because there are still some people, even though um, we're so far into the pandemic, there are still people who like might be immunocompromised or like, you know, still mm-hmm. a little bit worried and concerned. Yes. So, um, you know, especially with like random variants coming out of nowhere. Oh yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, you just don't know it. That everybody's in a flux kind of trying right. to come back to normal. And then, and then at the same time, I think a lot of, um, I've heard from families that they've been able to attend so much more through through virtual mm-hmm. um, because you don't have the the uh, challenges of space or mm-hmm. finding time to take off or travel time. Right. Or even just really. perhaps a lot of people, especially if they're teens, they don't have, they don't drive yet. Mode of transportation. So like, yeah. You know, so it's like relying on a parent, but you know, a lot of parents right now are working multiple jobs, you know, yes, and it's, it's exactly. so the kids are kind of just at home with their way to connect is through, you know, unfortunately the internet and it's not the same as in person, but you know, it's better than nothing and just like isolation, but that's why everyone's on social media because they're like looking for that connection with like Mm -hmm. other people. Yeah. They're looking for people like them, you know, what, what, what they reflect. And I think you, you hit a great point about expressing you know who the people are that the organization is so that way others can connect to them and see who they really are and who the organization is and and um, through your content I love the content because I see what you're talking about you see a little bit of everything and uh, some fun things that made me smile and giggle and some other great things that hit my heart Um, so I can see how you know you're connecting 
to your audience and giving them that wide variety of emotional support, even just through video or through quotes that resonates with them. And um, that's one of the reasons I really wanted to have you on because I just love what you guys are doing. And I wanted others to know that you know, you're out there and you're available. And I wanted to learn a little more so we can, as we meet families and um, you know, young people, you know, we have another resource to connect them to, you know, in our organization. So that way we can say, oh, great, you know, there's Turning Point, you know, you would probably, if you're on, love social media, if you love that connection, and this is a great place to start because you're going to see, I mean, you guys have so many things, like you said, podcasts, you're on Twitter, you're on TikTok, you're on Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Facebook, and Discord. I think I got them all. Yes, we are also on Discord and we that yes. the Discord is set up to be another place for people to talk one on one or like in a group setting okay. that's virtual. So it's just mm-hmm. a way for like another avenue for peer support that's not, you know, just talking to us, although mm-hmm. that's also an option because we're in there as well. But, you know, it's just to connect with other people who are like, you know, sh- might be struggling with their mental health or, you know, might be on like more of the recovery side and kind of like have been through it and in a better place now and able to like, you know, give that advice like, oh yeah, like the, you know, validation of I've been through it. It is really hard, but like, here are some of the things that helped me. Like, it's just like Mm -hmm. a safe space to talk to other people. That's like not as open as like on social media. Yeah, I see that. Definitely. It's kind of like a, a closed group but it's, it's more personal. And that's like you said, no, not so out there everywhere and for all eyes to see. And, and you're connecting with people who have had lived experience. So, and, and as you mentioned before that sometimes, you know, you need your providers, but that lived experience just gives another level of understanding on an emotional level, on, on a person, a more personal level when you know that you've lived it. Cause in our organization too, everyone that works there has a lived experience. Cause you know, we service um, families that have children and adults or self-advocates with special needs, disabilities. So we all either are caregivers, our parents, our family members somehow connected to that. So we have that lived experience. And I totally agree with you. It just gives you um, a different understanding. There's not as much explanation when people talk to you, you're just like, you, you know, you get it. And they're just so relieved because they're like, Oh, I don't have to explain myself. I say something, one word, and you exactly know what I'm talking about. And I'm not like having to excuse myself, apologize. You, you just understand who I am. And that is such an important place that people need to find to, to be themselves and to be, you know, besides with providers, which is very important, but to be with others, you know, whether there's mentors or peer to peer is such an integral and you're seeing more growth of it because it really is the, I feel that it's more that holistic, complete caring for individuals through the process that they're going through, not only through the provider side, but to find that peer, peer to peer support, um, And I want you to talk more instead of me. So I'll be quiet for a second. (laughs) I think you touched it. Yeah, go ahead. The other important thing about the peer support is like, you know, we're all close in age. It's not like talking to like, you know, someone way older who it's like, do they get it? Because like, Mm -hmm. I think like the age component also helps because we are in the same age group. So Mm -hmm. that's a great point. That's a great point because you're right. The, the generational gaps and things like that, you know, even, even 10 years apart or something, especially I feel like how we're living, it's almost like the computers, it's like evolving each year, even more than in the past, you kind of stayed within certain things. So to have that, that age group specific, to have that more comfortable atmosphere and, and true connection, because, you know, you're within the same age group. So you, you automatically already know and feel like, okay, they're really going to know who I am because we're, we're alike, not only in what we're going through, but age wise and, and most likely experience wise. So you're, you're getting that deeper connection, which is a great point to have. I love that. So I love your organization. Um, so you just answered that question. Why do you think it works so well? <laughs> yes. And what do you love best about the work you're doing? I would love to know. So I think what I love best is, you know, that being able to help other people, like, obviously, 
sharing some of the things I've been through and like some of my struggles, it's like not easy to be so transparent sometimes because I'm like, oh my God, because if, you know, I'm putting it out there for the people who have been through it, but I'm sure it's meeting other people's eyes that like haven't been through it and they're reading it thinking like, oh my God, what is this? Mm -hmm. But like knowing that I'm helping the people who have been through it to like not feel as alone and like it's more than that too because like we obviously we do more than share like our story like we have resources you know I try to like put some educational stuff up there because like a lot of there are a lot of misunderstandings about Mm -hmm. mental health and like you know different disorders and it's like you know some of these things you're experiencing they are normal like you know there are other people that have gone through it and like these things they're not something wrong with you like they're connected to like the disorder you have, you know, it's not, you're not broken, but like you're struggling with this. So, and these are just the things that come along with like struggling with anxiety, struggling with depression and like other disorders, like they come with symptoms of their own, but a lot of people, like, I just feel like they don't know that like Mm -hmm. some of the symptoms are symptoms of their disorder. And they're, it's not like, especially because you know, some like symptoms are physical. And so someone with anxiety, it like kind of leads to that health anxiety mm-hmm. and like going on to Google, like, oh my God, what uh, is this? And like a lot of those yeah. things like an anxiety symptom, but like mm-hmm. that's why I'm trying to raise awareness about like some of the more not talked about symptoms. Like, you know, we all know the general symptoms of most disorders that are common at this point, but there's all these weird things because, you know, humans are unique and yes. like, we all kind of like, it all manifests very differently for everyone. Mm-hmm. Like, I know for me, I get like, you know, that tingling and numbness in my hands. And like, if someone doesn't know that's anxiety, they're going to be like, oh my God, like I need to go to the hospital. Like this isn't yeah. normal. There's something wrong. So like mm-hmm. even just those educational things, um, you know, talking about how to care for yourself and like, you know, the importance of self-care and like how to take care of your like mental well-being. And like this week is Women's Health Week, you know, so we kind of highlighted why it's important for your mental health to take care of Mm -hmm. your physical health because they do go hand in hand. They're both health, you know, like, like, oh, it's not, but like your mental health is really as important as your physical health, but they also go together, you Mm -hmm. know, and because these like our audience is like younger, there's probably a lot of things that nobody's talked to them about. So it's like really important that we kind of like use both our experience and like various resources to kind of like educate them and like let them know, like, these are things that can happen. It's not like a scare tactic, but it's like, we've been through this and there are ways to like, you know, um, cope and combat them. But like, these are things that do happen and that are probably linked to like, you know, your mental health. Yeah, yeah. And you bring up great points because the education you're giving them will help them talk to their providers and probably ask right. more questions that they didn't even think they should be asking. Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, providers will only know based on what we tell them. And sometimes we right. don't realize certain things could be important. So the way you're connecting the education and the not so typical things that people don't think about and, and say, oh my God, I didn't realize that could be part of it. Um, I need to say something and next visit. And so you're helping them just overall feel better, understand, and, and, and even have a better provider experience because the providers, the more information we can give them, hopefully the better they can give us a service. So you're helping that relationship and, and indirectly helping their physical health by supporting their mental health and supporting just the education around it. Um, so you mentioned a uh, podcast, social media, peer to peer, and you said you have tons of resources on, on your website. I think you mentioned some of them already. What is one, one big resource or one section that you would love people to maybe start off on your website to check things out for Turning Point? Like you really think that's a great place to get started or maybe one or two places? So for people who, you know, might not have like a lot of knowledge, I think the mm-hmm. Q&A guide is a great place to start. Um, so the Q&A guide, it has all kinds of like different questions that are like common questions and young us young people have answered them for mm-hmm. like other young people. So, you know, it's different than 
having, you know, a doctor or a provider tell you these things because it's coming from someone else who's like Mm -hmm. around your age. It's like, it's just such a different experience. It's a different language, different conversation. Yes. Right. Um, so, and it's more comfortable to hear from like someone else your age because it doesn't feel as much of like a lecture. And not only that, you know, Mm -hmm. in the answers in that Q and a guide, you know, there's a little bit of lived experience weaved into the questions and kind of like, oh, this is what I dealt with. And like, you know, this is how I started my therapy journey. And also in there, it kind of goes through, you know, how to get started with like finding a therapist and like how to get started, like with like your recovery. So Mm -hmm. there, that's just like kind of a broad range of like questions from like how to get started. What is it? Um, you know, what are the best ways to cope? Can you deal with it on your own? And if so, how do you deal with it on your own if you, you're not like ready to go to a provider? So all of those kind of questions are answered in the Q&A guide. So that's definitely a great place to start. But also like, you know, just reading through like whether it's our stories or like just the blog posts, there's mm-hmm. a ton of great content like within the website, just in like written content as well. But I think probably our most popular section right now is the video section. That's where I see most people going because, you know, a lot of people don't want to read <laughs> anymore. Yeah, so like yeah. the podcasts and the videos yeah. are good for the people who don't want to read, but they still want to like get the information and the content. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that visual, it's just, it's something different. It's, mm-hmm. you're, you're not just reading black and white letters, you're right. seeing someone and it's, it's just more fun and you're, you're hearing a voice and, you know, right. so it's the connection and a different level. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, I loved the videos. I popped in there a couple of times and I was sneaking through and I was like, these are awesome, <laughs> but thank you for that. So definitely I'll put, I'll put um, in the, in the comments below, I'll put direct links to your Q and a guide page. I'll put it to the short stories and the video section and the blog can choose pick and choose and I'm sure when they go on the your website you can clearly it's so well lined up that you can you know choose um the different things but um no that's wonderful I love what you said about what you do and how how it impacted you and how you're you're really trying to also help others through your story and everyone else is doing that through their stories is really just to help others and you're putting yourself out there um like you said, regardless of what eyes are seeing or anything, because you want to help others. And, and um, I'm sure maybe someone helped you at the same time. So you, you appreciate that and you can, you know, pass that on to others, especially like you said, when it's, it's your directly your age, your age group, you can really um, connect more versus someone else older, or if you're older, someone else younger telling you they've experienced it. Sometimes it's not all, it's not the same feeling. Um, when it's someone true peer to peer, like directly in the experience, the age overall, it's you truly a peer to peer. So I'm so glad that we got to connect and I'm so glad that we're going to be able to share what you're doing with others, um, through our platform and letting our families know. So that way their teens and adults, they can connect with you guys and get more information. And then I know you're going to send me the flyer with, um, how to connect peer to peer. And then, yeah, your website is lovely. It's built out. It's, it's very easy. And I love the sections and the social media, everything's there. And there's a little bit of everything. And I love that you've covered all the senses, like everything is covered and it's amazing. So you are a very good social media manager. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. And I don't know if you have anything else to um, finish off with, but I really appreciate having you. And I've learned so much more about your organization organization and your project and it makes me just want to go and learn more because it is really amazing what you're doing thank you that's great i really did learn a lot